What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. Well, we made it, we're finally into June and we're expecting a pretty big month overall with several game reveals and some big time showcases coming up here pretty soon. And it looks like some of those announcements have already gotten started with a new game system being revealed yesterday that we'll go over here today. Also, we are gonna be talking about Sonic Frontiers because we had some new gameplay shown off that has actually gotten people pretty excited online. And we're also gonna be talking about a release date that appears to have leaked out early for one of my most anticipated games of the year. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you hit that like button, helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below and ring that notification bell so you can keep up to date with all the uploads here on the channel. And we're gonna start today with a couple of stories for Summer Games Fest. That coming up in about a week and a half, and it's basically Jeff Keighley's uh, E3 replacement show. Well, one thing we're used to with a lot of these shows is a lot of CGI trailers, but it appears that Jeff Keighley has at least heard a lot of the feedback from people when it comes to this, and he does address these kind of things in Twitter spaces, which is pretty cool to see him kind of talk one-on-one -on -one with different viewers and gamers. And this is what he had to say. This was transcribed by The Loadout saying, we've got a couple of games that we're doing five minute plus gameplay sequences for that I think people will enjoy. It's literally like raw gameplay. It's nothing super produced, but hopefully you'll be able to sit back and say, cool, that's how that game plays. What a what a concept. You, you watch a, a showcase about video games and you see video games being played to show off that video game. I think we've just be become very used to CGI trailers to make announcements for games way in advance. I've thought about it more and more. I think I would prefer to have less reveals with more gameplay for those reveals. Obviously, then they'd be a bit closer to the game coming out, we assume, but that is part of the poll question that we'll check out later on in the show. Also, sticking with Summer Games Fest, we did have the partner lineup for the 2022 show revealed over on Twitter, this from Jeff Keighley. And I mean, the card he's showing here looks pretty stacked. It's got 2K, Activision, Atlas, Bandai Namco, uh, Capcom, Square Enix, Sega. Two of the big three are present on this card as well, that being PlayStation and Xbox. It's interesting that Nintendo is not on here because they would at least take part in E3 each year, whereas Sony would be the one sitting out. So they've actually kind of switched places here. But based on what Jeff Keighley is saying that more will be announced as we go along, I guess it's possible that Nintendo could jump in here, but I'm still thinking they're just gonna go do their own Nintendo Direct show and, and deal with all of that themselves. But at least so far from what Jeff Keighley is showing, I mean, it looks, looks pretty good. And I also noticed that if you take a look at PlayStation's Twitter account for that state of play, they're using like the Summer Game Fest like watermark or advertisement on the top. So I guess that state of play is officially part of Summer Games Fest. Either way, the show is coming up here, like I said, in about a week and a half. So we'll see what Jeff has then. Oh, and it does look like about an hour after this video goes live, we will have a trailer for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. We can see this over on Twitter from the Pokemon account saying new Scarlet Violet trailer drops tomorrow. You read that right, trainers? Tune in to our YouTube channel, 6 a.m. Pacific or 9 a.m. Eastern time on June 1st for the latest on Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. And I assume this means that they're probably isn't gonna be a Pokemon Direct or Pokemon Presents or anything like that, considering Scarlet and Violet would probably be like the big thing that you would tune in for. Instead, they'll probably just showcase this game as we go along throughout the year in different trailers, just kind of talking about what exactly this open world, I hope, is gonna be. That's my biggest thing around this. Is it really gonna be a true open world where immediately you can just go do what you want or do you complete different tasks in what looks like an open world at first, and then you realize, oh, okay, now this area is unlocked to me, and so on there. So I guess we'll uh, we'll see exactly what they have. Hopefully, it's able to live up to a lot of the hype, but we'll find out later today. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with the new game system that was announced yesterday, that being from Evercade. And Evercade has actually been building up a collection of cartridges and releases over the last couple of years for this home console that they have. And I haven't been as interested in that, especially when they first launched it. They had just a couple of games to look into, but now they have a collection of over 300 different games that are available through these collection cartridges. And now we can see that they have a handheld that's been announced. We can see their announcement trailer here. This being for the Evercade EXP, they say it's the newest handheld retro gaming console from the makers of Evercade. Retro gaming is leveled up with all new best in class features. And 
You know what? It, I think it has a pretty good spot right now at its price point of $150. They say from Atari to arcade, 8-bit to 32-bit pixels to 3D, there's something for everyone to enjoy. They also have some of the specifications outlined on their website. 4.3 inch IPS screen, that's 800 by 480, which you don't really need a super high resolution or anything for these kind of games that you're playing on it, that being more of the retro variety. They also have something called tape mode, which is for vertical screen orientation. If you look at like the, the left side, A and B are sideways when you're looking at it in like the normal orientation. That is so you can flip it uh, on its side and it plays into the vertical orientation for like different shoot 'em ups for example. So that's a fun idea. 1.5 gigahertz processor, four gigabytes built in memory, stereo speakers, USB-C charging port. Thank you, I'm done with the USB micro. No more of that, just USB-C everything from now on. Built-in Wi-Fi, so we'll be receiving over there updates. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, 720p mini HDMI output for TV, so it will be able to hook up to your flat screen and you can play the games there as well. And they are currently quoting four to five hours of gaming per charge. My favorite part though is in their announcement trailer, they show off like the, the physical games that they sell. And one of the things is like, oh, it comes with the manual. That's where we are now, by the way, that's a selling point. Decades ago, that was just a given. Yeah, it's gonna come with a manual. Of course, now it's like, look at this. This is this is unreal, it comes with a manual. The games themselves, the collection cartridges, I think are priced pretty fairly at $20, considering they are physical and you pop them into the system itself. And I think the system has a is a pretty good size. It certainly looks much more portable than some of the other handhelds that are currently out there. You look at something like the Steam Deck, then you look at this, and yeah, it seems like something you'd be more more uh, inclined to take on the go with you. And the fact that it's available at major retailers like, like Best Buy or Amazon, it's not something that you're necessarily special ordering through a website and just hoping that it eventually gets to you or take part in a Kickstarter project or anything there. So I like what I'm seeing. I will be keeping an eye on this one. They say more information will be made public in September as they head towards a winter 2022 release. So I'll look to pick one of these up and maybe we'll check it out in a video. Next up, let's talk about Sonic Frontiers. This is a game game that I want to do well. I mean, it's been tough for 3D Sonic for a long time, I feel like. I know there were some older ones that people did enjoy, some some favorites, we'll say, of the fans, but like, we haven't seen the Sonic series, especially on the 3D side, reach the likes of what we have with Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. I mean, that was a really cool 3D Sonic game when it released, and it's still fun to go back to now, though. It, it has, it's definitely aged quite a bit. So I was very hopeful when they announced Sonic Frontiers and the fact that they're willing to do things like delay it out and they appear to be looking for higher review scores on it tells me they are putting a lot of effort and hopefully polish, we'll say, <laughs> into this game. But we did get a glimpse at some of the gameplay here, which you can see this was shared over on the Sonic the Hedgehog account. It does look like uh, that IGN will have like their IGN first, where they will be doing world exclusive reveals, which may include them maybe just sitting down and playing the game because we had a lot of snippets of the gameplay here. Nothing that was too prolonged. So we did see Sonic, for example, get into like this circle that he would run in and it would all of a sudden push out what looks like like the, these blue lines that are scanning the environment. I'm playing a lot of Horizon Forbidden West right now, and I'm getting that sense of when you take over a tall neck and it kind of sets out these shock waves, it scans the environment. Something similar here because we had heard in some of the rumors through playtesting that it's gonna kind of lean into the Far Cry style where you have large areas that you have these towers or maybe these rings that you run in, and then it fills up your map with a bunch of things to do. They also showed off grinding rails that he was jumping and moving around and it looked like they would extend pretty far up into the sky because when he was battling a pretty large enemy you would see them off into the distance and it seemed very very fast and Sonic was bouncing all over the place so at least for the speed side of things which it's Sonic you expect it to be very very fast it seems like they are at least uh, doing that part right but again it's very small snippets of gameplay, a very small sample size here. So there's a lot of stuff we need to find out about this game. And it's supposed to be coming out later on this year, basically on all platforms. So I'm cautiously optimistic based on what they've shown so far, but I gotta see a lot more because while Sonic appears to be trying something new, if they really do lean too far into what Ubisoft 
typically does, there is that open world fatigue that can set in. So we'll see if they're able to kind of walk that tightrope and make a good or a really good 3D Sonic game. Again, I'm very hopeful for it. Next up, let's talk about one of my most anticipated games for 2022, and that's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. This is obviously a callback to the old days of the Ninja Turtles games with like uh, Turtles in Time or Hyperstone Heist. Not like what was attempted with whatever Ninja Turtles reshelled tried to be there. So I am really excited for what we've seen of this game, which feels like it's a lot. Like they've shown off a ton of gameplay for it, a lot of footage. So it almost feels like maybe it's ready to go now. Well, there is a database listing or a database leak that appears to have gotten out there. We can see this over on Twitter. This from PlayStation Game Size saying, according to PlayStation Database, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge coming June 16th, 2022. They say maybe it's just a placeholder, but you know what? Two weeks from now, I wouldn't be shocked if this game was out. Mostly because, again, we've seen a lot of this. They had to delay it. I mean, what if it really is ready to go this month in June and they just shadow dropped it? Well, they announced that it was the release date. Oh, yeah, and it's next week, like at Summer Games Fest. What if they show up there and they're like, hey, it's... You can you can check this game out next week. Maybe they had maybe they worked in a, a an Xbox Game Pass deal even, and maybe they're part of Microsoft's show. And boom, it's also in Game Pass day one on the 16th. I'm very hopeful that this is correct because I want to play this game as soon as possible. It just looks like a ton of fun. And you know what? If they dropped it in June. There's not like a ton of stuff there. Whereas if they go later in the year, maybe in uh, like uh, September, October, November, there could be a bunch of games starting to crowd up those spaces. So yeah, drop it in June. And I think most of us will be checking it out, especially those of us who have been following it because it's probably gonna come in at like a 20 or $30 game or something. And for most of us who remember the old days of the Ninja Turtles games, yeah, we'll be on that right away. So I'm crossing my fingers that this is indeed a shadow drop or an announcement for a release date just a week off at Summer Games Fest or at Microsoft Showcase. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about some new Xbox Game Pass games that have been announced for about the first week of June. We can head over here to news.xbox.com. They have a nice little card at the top showing us all the different games starting on June 1st with For Honor Marching Fire Edition, that's cloud console and PC. Moving up to June 2nd, the Ninja Gaiden Master Collection. That's a pretty good uh, inclusion there to have. Console and PC. June 7th, we have Assassin's Creed Origins, Cloud Console and PC. This makes sense, by the way, because we do have Ubisoft. Uh, I think they just announced a 60 FPS patch for Assassin's Creed Origins on Xbox or just next-gen systems. So good to see that one getting dropped in there. I, I still like Odyssey more, but Assassin's Creed Origins wasn't bad. It just, it ran into that Ubisoft open world fatigue like like a lot of their games do. A chorus, which is one that I bought a couple of weeks ago and here it is now getting dropped into to Game Pass. That looked like an interesting kind of space flight combat game. So I was gonna check it out either way, but there you have it. It's now in Game Pass, of course, like I said, weeks after I buy it. Disc Room, that's cloud console and PC. And with, then we have Space Lines from the Far Out console and PC. And then June 15th, we do have games leaving. That includes Darkest Dungeon, Dungeons and Dragons Dark Alliance, Greedfall, Limbo, and Worms Rumble. I mean, this isn't a bad way to start out the month of June. Remember, this is just for the first week. A chorus, again, I picked it up because I am planning to eventually get to it, but good to see that thrown in there. Assassin's Creed Origins and Ninja Gaiden Master Collection. If you haven't played any of those older Ninja Gaiden games, not a bad thing to check out there either. And I do expect Microsoft to probably make some announcements at their showcase. Maybe games that just drop in right away. So we'll have to keep an eye on that one. And before we go to the comment of the day, we're gonna take a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday, where I ask, would you rather have more game announcements that are all CGI trailers at an event like E3 or fewer announcements with each one having real gameplay shown. 84% said more gameplay reveals. I want to see what the game looks like and 16% said more announcements. I'm fine with CGI trailers. I, I think CGI trailers work fine if it's an established IP, one that it, maybe it's a sequel to a previous game that generation. Like God of War Ragnarok, I think the fact that they started that with a CGI trailer wasn't a big deal because we know what the God of War 2018 was. But when you show up with a new IP, let's say Contraband, right? Like 
we, we don't know what that looks like. So it's tough when you see the CGI trailer and we have nothing to go on. So in that case, yes, I, I prefer gameplay showing off. And yeah, if it's raw gameplay and they have to do, do a little thing, it's like, hey, there's a work in progress. If that tree over there looks a bit flat, don't worry about it. I'm fine with that. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from Weaver saying, hopefully Sony got the message from the attention that fake tweet got. A Bloodborne PS5 4K 60 remaster with no load times and haptic feedback or adaptive trigger support would be amazing. The trick weapons are a great fit to do interesting things with haptics. The artwork of Bloodborne aged like fine wine, so it really doesn't need any graphical advancements beyond resolution, FPS, boost. Yeah, I mean, obviously it needs to be boosted up to at least 60 FPS, 4K, sure. You know, you bring up the DualSense, and I've been coming back to this more and more with this generation so far. When I see a third-party game, I do look into if they have some interesting implementations of that dual sense controller with the adaptive triggers and haptic feedback. And it does kind of make up my decision sometimes if I'm gonna get it for the Xbox or the PlayStation because the dual sense is a very interesting controller. And I hope maybe Microsoft realizes that and looks into introducing a new controller for the Series X or Series S, but I feel like it's a little late now because they have like the, the older controller compatible as well, but the DualSense can do some pretty cool things and add an extra element to these different games. And sure, with Bloodborne and some of those weapons, I'm sure they can do some pretty cool things. I think as for if Sony ha had recognized that tweet blowing up, be a little late now. Like I would have hoped that they would have I got the message a while ago and Bloodborne's been in, in the works for a bit, but I guess we'll see in the coming months for these showcases and if not the coming years. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. If not, hit the dislike, leave comments down below. But everything we talked about here today was the Evercade EXP. What do you think of the little handheld with the collection cartridges of retro games? Then also, what about that Sonic Frontiers gameplay? And do you think there really is a, a shadow drop or a quick release in the works for Shredder's Revenge? Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.